Now, what did you build? What we built was a pole barn structure on the exterior. Um, we built 17 rooms with approximately 11,000 bin capacity. And what we and that's total? That's yeah. total in this okay. particular structure. Okay. Um, we incorporated um, something that's relatively recent in, in controlled atmosphere construction, and it's a panel system of um, construction for the interior walls that will contain the atmosphere as well as provide the insulation that you need to maintain the fruit at approximately 32 to 35 degrees. Uh, it's a four inch sandwich of foam encased uh, with um, enamelized steel on, on both sides. And that provides, um, number one, the airtight seal, and number two, the insulation for these rooms. Um, along with state-of-the-art uh, refrigeration system, and uh, the very latest in the atmosphere control technology out of storage control systems out of Sparta um, comprise the package. The whole object of what we're doing here um, and the industry is doing, I mean, we're trying to ensure that we have a good piece of fruit going to our ultimate customer, which is uh, the person who's shopping in the retail stores. I mean, what we want to be able to do is deliver a product that approximates fresh picked as closely as possible. And that's the whole concept behind controlled atmosphere. And what, in other words, what we do is we will take fruit that's been harvested, we will put it inside these airtight rooms, we will take the core temperature down, and it tends to be variety specific, but say in the area of about 33 degrees, and we will take the oxygen content, which normally is about 21.5% that we're breathing, we will take that down to anywhere from 1.5% to 2%. A candle will extinguish at 12, for example. So we're taking it all the way down to that level. Carbon dioxide, we will increase a bit, up to about 3 to 3.5%. Three and, and what you can do once you maintain that atmosphere is you're basically slowing down the respiration of the apple. Now you have to be very, very careful that you don't let the oxygen go down too far because you will uh, set up an anaerobic um, condition whereby the apple will begin to ferment and you can't have that. So we want to be able to enable the fruit to keep respirating but just at a very low level to keep it from aging. Then, as market conditions dictate, in other words, we need that particular variety or that particular lot that's in that particular room, we will open that room and then bring the apples out and then run them over the line, pack them, distribute them to the customers that are calling for them. The late 1960s or 1950s with the advent of the chain store. Yeah. All right. All of us on our farms out here, we're packing our own apples. Schaefer orchards, Clink orchards, craft uh, orchards. Everybody up and down the street pack their own fruit. And for example, an A and P truck had to go up and down the street collecting 15 bushel here, 20 bushel there, you know, 50 bushel um, someplace else, trying to put a load together uh, for their um, chain stores. And about that time, uh, we decided uh, a bunch of growers in the area, as a matter of fact, it was six families, uh, got together and decided that perhaps the best thing to do would to be uh, would to build a central facility um, to pack apples and sell apples, and then let growers do what they did best, and that was actually grow the fruit. So out of that came Jack Brown Produce. We were incorporated in 1960. Um, the uh, six area families along with uh, Mrs. Jack Brown or Alita Brown. And Alita uh, took on the duty as president of the company. She ran this facility and did the sales. And those of us on our individual farms then grew the fruit. And uh, quite a number of us also stored our own fruit. 
So we provided the storage and the production. She provided the sales and the packing. Um, became quite successful over the years. Uh, we added more shareholders uh, as the years went on. Uh, now this facility um, will pack and ship fruit for about 100 growers on the western end or west side of, of Michigan, anywhere from the Indiana state line all the way up through Charlevoix. And we pack on almost a year-round basis now. And we are a factor of our growers. Um, in other words, as production goes up, I mean, we have to expand our ability to handle what our growers are growing. Now, this is a corporation, it's not a cooperative. And if you own stock in Jack Brown Produce, it does not necessarily entitle you to specific greater time or storage capacity, anything like that. And it's nothing more than an equity interest in the company. But nonetheless, um, we're all in this together. Uh, growers uh, and the packers, shippers, and storage operators. And it's become evident over the past several years that uh, production within our organization is growing. So we're going to need to be able to uh, handle that fruit in terms of storage and the board of directors last year uh, made the decision that perhaps we had to seriously consider expanding our storage capacity here at Jack Brown Produce. And so as a result, that was the project this year that we uh, would build a uh, controlled atmosphere facility. Um, the size was going to be essentially perhaps in two stages. Um, but because of this year's crop, the board made the determination that perhaps, uh, and particularly with um, the economy the way it is, we can get a building put up reasonably, um, and we certainly had the use for it this year, that we're going to go ahead with both parts of the project. So that's what we did.